Hi, I'm Jackie Joya, and welcome to Inspiration Soup. Today, I'm going to be talking about the topic of grief, and I'm making one of my favorite soups that's a great comfort food for the topic of grief, my chicken pot pie soup from my own recipe. Every time I turn on the news these days, I'm reminded of how many people are suffering from losing their loved ones, to losing their lives, to losing their possessions in a forest fire. And it just made me think that, especially now at the season of autumn and moving into the holiday season, that this would be a good time to talk about the grieving process, as so many people may be going through grief during the holiday season as well. I would like to share with you some perspectives from Chinese medicine on the grieving process and how it relates to our bodies. So at this season of autumn, we are at the height of the metal element, which is all about letting things in and letting things go. It's about openness. And the large intestine and lung meridians are related to the metal element. Grief is an emotion expressed by the lungs. And when we are going through grief, we are challenged to release these negative emotions and allow for the change to come in, the, the new. And it can be very stressful and very scary. And when we are attached to people and things, it can be very challenging to let these things go. And this is what the metal element is all about, is learning how to be detached, but still allow room for that love to come in. So when we are going through grief, it is so important to really feel those emotions. When you can feel it and release it through crying, you're letting your lungs work the way that they're supposed to. You're taking in and you're releasing. And when you suppress those emotions, they can actually cause more of a physical disturbance in your body. As the Chinese have shown us, that you could have muscle tension in your shoulders and neck and pec muscles in your chest, in your upper back. You can feel a sense of oppression and heaviness. We can get easily uh, depressed if this emotion of grief isn't dealt with. We could also uh, have walls built up to protect us from having any future hurt. And this all can cause, if it's long term, this all can cause a sense of deprivation and self-pity. There are a lot of ways that these negative emotions can affect our physical bodies. So if we can go through that grieving process, we can allow room for new experiences to come in, for new love to come in, and it's always very difficult to let go of what we hold precious. It's not saying that you're not going to hurt, and it's not saying that you're not going to remember those people that have passed. It just means that you have allowed yourself to let it go so that you can open yourself up to what is new for you, what new inspirations can come in, and you're saying that you have faith that everything will work out. We also want to look at these attachments to things and to people as what is that deeper desire that's beneath the surface that we're not really paying attention to. So if we are really attached to our house, what does that house symbolize for us? Is it a sense of comfort, stability, fun? Is it all the memories that you have inside the house? You want to realize that wherever you are, you have those memories. You have your stability. You have love. So wherever you go, you can take all of that with you. And the actual physical location doesn't really matter. Because within you is a solid structure that you've built. Your foundation is firm in your faith and in your sense of self and your ability to be resilient and resourceful 
and survive. So all of these things are put to the test when we have a grief, grieving process going on. So I want you to just take a look at that for a minute and see you know, if any of this rings true for you. Obviously, we can never replace people. People are very precious to us. But what we can do is realize that as something leaves this earth, something else may take its place and it might be just as wonderful. So as we are pondering these thoughts, I'm going to be making this chicken pot pie soup to help fortify your spirit. I'm having ingredients that strengthen you, like the thyme and the onions and potatoes. Everything here is designed to help promote that sense of strength within yourself. So we're going to get started with um, sauteing all the vegetables and then we're going to talk about the essential oils or the the, um, the herbs that I've chosen to go in the pot. And as the soup is cooking we're going to do a little bit of breathing exercise called Qigong so that we are exercising those lungs and feeling what it's like to, to allow the air to easily come and go within us and strengthen us and invigorate us and help us to feel relaxed and grounded and connected to our deepest self and connected to our higher power and our higher self. So, let's make some soup. So, we're turning on the heat. And we're going to start sauteing our vegetables. You could just start with putting a little broth in there to get things started. I have a little Smart Balance here, which is a butter substitute for me because I'm doing non-dairy. But you could use whatever you like. So we're going to get that all softened up. And then we're going to start with the vegetables that I have chopped here. We have onions, celery, and carrots. And the onions are helpful with colds and cough. They are good for um, the liver with the high sulfur content. And they drive out impurities. And celery, celery's gotten a little bit of a bad rep. But celery neutralizes stomach acid. It's good for high blood pressure, and it has uh, calcium. It helps to keep your calcium in balance. It also helps with your stiff, cracking joints. So if you um, are having uh, those types of issues, I would recommend eating more celery. Of course, we have our carrots, which have a strong beta carotene, vitamin A content. It's a great antioxidant, perfect for the cold and flu season going to saute these vegetables up so not completely tender but a little bit tender and then we'll add our potatoes and the potatoes I think they've also gotten a bad rep too because of their high glycemic index but potatoes are a superfood Potatoes have a high potassium content, so they are good for the muscles and the joints, and also good for the heart. They leave an alkaline ash in the body, so they can treat acidosis. They're also good for bronchial inflammations. So, why not eat more potatoes? It'll make you feel good. Alright, we're getting this started. Now, we talk about the ingredients in the soup as being related to our lives. And there's several ingredients in the soup, but the main ingredient is your chicken, right? Because it's the chicken soup. However, all of these supporting cast ingredients are like, they're like your friends. They're like all the people in your life that matter. So, 
when all of these flavors are mingling together, we're creating all of these bonds, all these relationships. And these are important for us. So each one needs to be something that's going to be helpful for you or bring you up or feel good. So you wouldn't put ingredients together that don't really mesh well, you know? You don't, you don't want to have something in your soup that doesn't taste good. So think about that in relation to your life, too. Why would I want to have someone in my life who's really not uh, good for me? These are things that we can think about maybe letting go in our life. Finding ways of dealing with that in a little bit uh, better way, maybe, than to um, just keep allowing things to happen that you don't really want to happen. So even if we are letting go of some people that aren't really right for us, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't feel a sense of loss around that. It's still important to recognize that you have emotions and, and it's okay to feel sad at those, those endings because it's okay to know that at end, some endings, some positive things can come in and take its place. So that's what this metal element is all about, learning to release and learn how to receive what could be more beneficial for you. At this time I'm also going to add my broth, which is a chicken broth that I made earlier um, in the pressure cooker with the chicken carcass and uh, onions and celery. So that's pre-made, I'm going to pour that in. a good juju in there. So it's a pretty thick broth right now. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. This is about six cups of broth and I've chopped up uh, about six small red potatoes, a half a bag of baby carrots, one celery stalk, and half an onion. So far, that's what's going into our chicken pot pie soup. So I'm going to add maybe two more cups of water. Remember, this is your soup. You can make it however you like. Season it however you like. Put whatever vegetables in that you like. I usually put chopped uh, green beans in this as well. But today, I'm making this soup for a friend, and some people don't like green beans, and so I decided to leave it out. Um, this soup is going to a friend who's just recently lost her son, and so I thought what better uh, way to assist a friend is to bring her some homemade comfort food. Now I'm going to add my spices. and. This is fresh thyme. Thyme is a powerhouse when it comes to strengthening the spirit. It empowers to fully participate in the world. It improves assertiveness. It helps to set healthy boundaries. Roman soldiers bathed in thyme before entering battle. That's an interesting uh, tidbit of information. It helps with respiratory weakness. It helps with shallow breathing and bronchitis. And it improves circulation, helping with joint pain and arthritis. So time also strengthens the spirit. So it's really good for depression, anxiety, self-doubt, and withdrawal. What we can do is we can put this whole sprig into the pot, or we can remove these pretty little leaves by holding the stalk and going the opposite direction, pulling them off. So if you like to have the herbs in your soup to remain in your soup, you can take them off like this. Or if you don't want to, you can get the essence of thyme by putting the stalk right into your soup and taking it out after it's been wilted. So I like to have 
my thyme pieces right in the soup. So I'm going to put that, I'm actually going to do both. And you can use dried thyme as well. The benefit to our emotional state from thyme is coming from the thyme essential oil in the plant. So I'm going to put the sprig in by itself and I'm also going to put in the herbs that I have removed. I'm also choosing to use this garlic mix from one of my favorite spice stores, the Spice and Tea Exchange. It's called Vicks Garlic Fix. You can choose to use whatever seasonings you like. Um, you might like adobo or seasoned salt or garlic powder or poultry seasoning. All of those might go well in this soup for you. And I think it's fun just to play with flavors and just you know, see what works for you. And I'm going to just, I'm going to pour at will. Again, this is our soup. We can make it however we want. So I like to just play it by ear and see how it goes. Now, as this is coming up to temp and the vegetables are cooking, I'm going to lead you in a little Qigong breathing exercise so we can really feel more life force coming into us. And it might be a strange place to have do Qigong in the kitchen, but um, here we are. You can do this outdoors um, where you can really feel connected to the earth and all of the energies in our environment. You can do this with music if you like. It's a terrific daily practice to revitalize your spirit, to revitalize your body, and improve your circulation. So what we're going to do is just begin by paying attention to our breath. So just noticing the air as it comes through your nose and out through your mouth. You can also choose to breathe just through your nose. Placing the hands on the abdomen, or the hara as it's called, and noticing the rise and fall of your abdomen. Noticing your rib cage expanding with each inhale and contracting with each exhale. Notice if you're feeling tension in your back, shoulders, neck, chest. Now bringing your hands in front of you, bring your hands out and slowly bring them in until you feel pressure between your hands. You're contacting your own body's chi. You're making like an energy ball in front of you and holding that energy ball. Because we all have an electromagnetic field around our bodies. And as you bring your hands closer to each other, they're contacting that field. So as you're breathing in, you're increasing your field. Notice what it's like to breathe that air in. and out. And as you breathe, your, in, your hands go in and out, and then take the energy that's in your hands and push it into your navel, taking in, absorbing that chi and sending it down through your legs into the ground, into the earth, and then bringing it back up Contacting all of the energy around you, bringing it into your body again. Breathing three times. Feeling that chi expand.
feeling your pulse relax bringing that energy into your body again and sending it down into the earth feeling more relaxed with each breath One more at your abdomen. Feeling more enlivened and energized with each breath. Bringing the energy into your body, something nourishing and helpful. Letting go of what doesn't serve you. And we're going to do this again at the heart level. Starting to feel your energy come into your heart and your lungs. Breathing in that pure life force energy, bringing it into your heart pulling it in, nourishing your body, sending it down through your abdomen, your hips, your legs, your feet, into the ground, feeling grounded and relaxed, bringing your arms back up, collecting all the chi around you, collecting all that life force energy, breathing it into your lungs, feeling your lungs expand, feeling your rib cage widen, feeling your back muscles stretch, Feeling your shoulders relax and come down as you bring the energy into your heart and lungs again, into your trunk and sending it down into your hips, into your legs, into the feet, into the ground. Bringing it back up, collecting that vital life force energy again, bringing it into your lungs. Bringing it into your heart, feeling nourished, feeling relaxed. Feeling the sense of letting go, feeling connected to all that is, connected to your truth, your deepest desires, feeling energized, feeling like you can allow for new and wonderful to come into your life, feeling detached from the outcomes, knowing that everything is going to be okay. bringing the arms down, bring your arms overhead, bringing it into the top of your head, feeling connected to your divine source, the source of energy, all that is, your higher power, whatever it is that you believe in, bringing that into your being, feeling whole, connected, relaxed, grounded, faithful, Believing in your truth, believing that everything will be okay. And take one last breath, connecting to all that is, feeling revitalized and whole. Bringing your back, arms back to the sides and down. And hopefully you'll feel more relaxed now and more comforted by this life force energy. And we're going to go back to stirring our pot, stirring our soup. It's boiling now, so I'm going to turn the heat down to a simmer. knowing that everything is going to be okay. Our comfort food is on its way to nourishing our bodies with all those wonderful ingredients. So this is going to cook down another 10 minutes or so. And then normally I have raw chicken that I would put in at this time. But I chose to skip a step and use a whole rotisserie chicken. And that way we can just add the chicken closer to the end.
breathing in all of that chicken soup goodness. Ah. I'm feeling good about that soup. I don't know about you, but hope yours is turning out just as fine as mine is. I'm going to add some cut up mushrooms. And we're going to add some petite peas. They're frozen. You can put them in you know, as many as you like at your discretion. Soup is really taking shape now. All those wonderful flavors are mixing. And our broth, the thing that keeps us going, all the wonderful things that we like about life, is moving all of these wonderful uh, relationships around in the pot, all of these wonderful vegetables, our friends and family, we're all swimming around in there in our our soup, our life soup, and they're sharing with each other their flavors and all of their wonderful personalities. And um, we're going to go ahead and add the chicken now and let that start to absorb the flavors of the broth. So we shouldn't have a lot of broth. It shouldn't be a brothy soup. This is more of a thicker soup. Just like pot pie is full of vegetables and chicken. And we're going to thicken it at the end. So our soup is still coming together and um, to thicken it we're going to use, I am going to use arrowroot starch. It is um, different than cornstarch, but you can certainly use cornstarch to thicken your soup as well. It is uh, an ingredient that they actually use in Chinese cooking to thicken their gravies and sauces. So why not use an ingredient from Chinese cooking in a Chinese medicine segment. So, all of these things that we've done today, the soup and the oils from the herbs, the spices, the vegetables, the qigong, it's all meant to support your grieving process. Taking in nourishing ingredients helps to boost your immune system. It gives you the strength to be able to deal with a loss. Like I said, the grieving process can leave you feeling weak as the lungs are processing the emotion. As you're crying, your lungs are working overtime, your chest and back muscles are working overtime. So the Qigong breathing is really helpful for relieving that stress in your muscles and supporting your lungs and taking in the necessary air, oxygen, nutrients that they need. And then dispersing that to the rest of your body so that your muscles can still function and your other organs are still functioning. Because we need to have oxygen going through our bodies for health. And the blood needs to be able to move the oxygen. So when you are doing Qigong, you're actually moving more oxygen through your system by in increasing your circulation. So I hope you enjoyed that Qigong piece and that you will practice that as you are going through your grieving process or just on a daily basis to invigorate yourself. And. Um, you can thicken the soup to whatever you like. Right now, it's a little bit thin, but you might like to have it that way. And we're getting ready to take out the thyme, the sprig of thyme that I have in there, because it's served its purpose. You don't want a guest choking on your sprig of thyme. That wouldn't be helpful. I hope you do enjoy this pot 
of chicken pot pie soup. Maybe you want to serve it with some fresh biscuits or some crusty bread. But whatever you do, let it warm your heart, let it warm your soul, and let it warm your body with all this wonderful goodness. And I hope that you have an inspired day and that you continue on your journey into joy with all of your wonderful gifts. And remember, be nice to yourself. Because it's hard to love and it's hard to lose and it's hard to break these chains that bind us to the past. So I'd like to introduce you to a couple of oils that would help with the grieving process as well and softening the metal element. This particular blend from my company uh, Divine Creations Aromatherapy is called Unwind and this is a blend of lavender, marjoram, rosemary, and cypress. And these oils are particularly helpful for letting go, for opening up to new experiences, letting go of the past. Cypress in particular is great for accepting changes, bringing to surface repressed emotions to be healed, especially those emotions that lead to self-destructive behavior, and it helps you to embrace a new experience. Rosemary oil helps to strengthen the spirit and energize the will. It helps resist distractions and is invigorating. So when you're breathing this in, you're getting all of these wonderful characteristics from the oils to strengthen you and help you release what's not, what's holding you back. What also can be helpful for strengthening your spirit is this Archangel Metatron oil. And this has also the thyme that we discussed earlier and rosemary and lavender. These are all helpful for relaxing and letting go and feeling secure in yourself. The other oil is the Archangel Ezekiel oil, which has benzoin in it and yarrow. And benzoin is great antidepressant. Yarrow is good for purging any negative emotions. So these oils are very helpful when you're going through this time of grief and you would Breathe them in, you would apply them like you would a perfume. You could put them in your bath water, you could diffuse them in a diffuser, but in some way let them be part of your life, let them become a part of your regular routine so that they can help bring you the balancing that you need. And they're in convenient uh, essential oil bottles so that you can carry them with you wherever you go for the balancing that you need.